Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this fireside chat titled Securing Prosperity AI Preparedness in a Connected World. Facilitated by Ryan Chalcott, award winning TV correspondent, with Doreen Bogdan Martin, Secretary General International Telecommunication Union. Well, thank you very much for uh, being with us today. We have a very uh, exciting fireside chat, and Secretary General, it's very gracious for you to return to the Global Cybersecurity Forum, second year in a row. I know that that's very much appreciated here in the kingdom, so thank you. Look, I, I want to jump right into it um, and ask you about standards, because I know standards is one of the pillars, really, at, at ITU of your activities. And they're often seen as the sort of indivisible, invisible backbone of uh, trustworthy technologies. So from ITU's perspective, how can standards, international standards, help build confidence when it comes to AI systems and protect societies from emerging risks? Uh, great. Um, thank you. And uh, excited to be here. It's great to be back in the kingdom. And of course, talking about standards um, is something that uh, takes me back to 1865. And I'll just pause for one second and say that the ITU was created 160 years ago, wow. um, essentially because of standards. And back then, uh, it was all about the telegraph. And so we needed to have standards and an international framework in place to ensure that telegraphic signals could actually move from one country to the other. Wow. Uh, so we move from the telegraph, the telephone, television, radio, internet, and now, of course, it's all about AI. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, as you said, um, standards are that invisible backbone that, um, that help ensure that um, communications happens, help to ensure that, um, that technology is interoperable, that it's, in that it's interconnected, that it's, um, that it's trusted. And I think in the age of artificial intelligence, that is so absolutely fundamental and so vital uh, to make sure that we have standards that uh, promote and support transparency, that advance safety, and I said, uh, have, have trust in them by, by design. Um, I think that message came through so loud and clear last week at the UN General Assembly where in so many conversations, it was all about digital, it was about cyber, it was about artificial intelligence and the importance of this trustworthy um, um, AI uh, and the importance of standards. And I would also add, having arrived this morning from Cape Town where I was attending the G20 Digital Ministerial and their AI task force, wow. that was also a, a key feature of the outcome of those two meetings was the importance of standards and that we need to work together as a global family to put in place the right standards. So I just wanted to give perhaps two examples, specific examples of what ITU is doing in this space. And the first is when it comes to, and we've heard it uh, a lot today, when it comes to um, uh, information integrity, when it comes to misuse, when it comes to deep fakes, when it comes to multimedia authentication. So the ITU is working closely with other standards-making organizations, ISO, IEC, to look at standards when it comes to deep fake detection. Hmm. Uh, we have some important work that we have advanced on the technical side. We also have important progress on the policy side that will help countries look at what kinds of tools and resources can they be using to detect misinformation and, and deep fakes. The second example I wanted to give is, is a sort of different example, but it comes to um, disaster and early warning prediction. Hmm. So today, if we look at any given year, I think it's about 300, 300 billion in losses that come from extreme weather events. More than half of the countries in the world don't have in place early warning systems. 
The ITU on the standard side has come up with a standard, it's called the CAP standard, the Common Alerting Protocol, known as the X1303. Uh, and that standard enables, I'm seeing my colleague nod, so I got the number right, X1303. Well, and we will, we will have a pop quiz after this conversation. Yes. And that is, that's on the pop quiz. Absolutely, and so that makes, it, it makes, it makes sure that alerts are interoperable. They can get across any network and get to any device. Huh. Wow. On top of that, you take artificial intelligence, and we're seeing incredible things when it comes to flood predictions, when it comes to detecting fires, when it comes to detecting cyclones. And so if you take that standard and put AI on top of it, we're seeing incredible things happen when it comes to predicting and ultimately saving lives. So interesting and so powerful because we've seen some really tragic, even just quite yeah, recently, recently. Um, examples where you know preparing for or knowing detecting extreme events would have been super helpful. Um, AI preparedness, as you know, isn't just about technology and standards. It's it's also about uh, people. And so, how do investments in digital skills training and capacity building ensure that workers, communities, countries, especially developing countries because there are a lot of in the digital world, you know, sort of have nots, if you will, in the digital divide. How, how can uh, that training and investment in training uh, benefit a, those, those places to have AI securely and inclusively? Yeah, so the skilling piece is fundamental. I mean, AI is, um, is about people. Um, there's some recent research coming from ILO that says one in four jobs are exposed, so to speak, when it comes to artificial intelligence, but that doesn't mean replacement. Yeah. So, you know, they're kind of impacted in, in some ways. Um, and then if we look at some numbers that came out of the World Economic Forum, they actually show that 92 million jobs could be um, displaced, let's say, by, by 2030. But on top of that, you can have 170 million new ones. So we're seeing this huge transformation of the workforce like nothing we've ever seen before in history. Um, and I think what we have to do is try to find ways to manage the risks and leverage the opportunities. And I think what, what countries or what we as a global community need to be doing is investing in three critical areas. And I would say the first critical area is infrastructure. And when it comes to infrastructure, we can think about the digital infrastructure on its own, but I think we also have to think about access to electricity. We also need to think about access to compute. Um, yeah. Today, we have about 150 countries that don't have access to compute. We have 600 million people that don't have access to electricity, and we have 2.6 billion people that have never, ever connected to the internet. So we have those big gaps that we got to close. Which is just astonishing. It's mind-blowing. Yeah. Right, because there's 7 billion people on the planet. So yeah. We're basically so it's a third of humanity that are not digitally connected. And when right. it comes to artificial intelligence, we get very concerned because we do see a divide when it comes. Uh, to that gap, because that gap, we cannot bring artificial intelligence to those that are not today connected to the internet. Yeah. And so again, that skilling piece is so fundamental. We have launched something called the AI Skills Coalition. Uh, we're targeting elementary school, high school, university, but also governments and the private sector to bring skilling with our partners, free skilling, to help ensure that we bring the right skill sets to, to people, to reskill, to upskill. So that's a fundamental piece. And then I, I would say the, the third pillar that we need to also invest in are the enabling policies, the enabling frameworks. So we have to make sure we're balancing regulatory frameworks and not stifling innovation, but we have to put in place those frameworks to ensure that the investment comes and that we can actually move from principles to practice, because we want to make sure that everyone can benefit from those opportunities. Yeah, you know, it makes me think you're talking about some of these things that AI, it obviously brings both opportunities uh, and risks, but that really cut across borders. It's one thing to do these things within countries, but to get countries uh, on, on board to collaborate, perhaps 
um, another matter. So how can global multi-stakeholder -stake, uh, uh, cooperation um, help us not only mitigate the, the, the risks when it comes to cybersecurity and societal risk, but also harness AI, right? Um, and the AI innovation that we're seeing responsibly so that it kind of actually advances resilience, trust, and shared prosperity worldwide. Um, well, maybe first to say that I think the GCF in and of itself is a great example of a multi-stakeholder partnership. We see each year new partners coming on board, so I think that's a great example. Shout out to the conveners. Applause now. GCF. <laughs> <laughs> and ITU is a proud partner. Mm -hmm. um, but I would also say that the ITU, and I'm seeing some of the ITU members in the crowd, I think the ITU is also a great example of a multi-stakeholder organization. Yes. We have 194 governments. We have over 1,000 private sector members. We have civil society, the technical community. And so we are also a multi-stakeholder institution. Yeah. But I was thinking, you know, when we think about artificial intelligence, I go back to 2003 and 2005. So world leaders came to um, Geneva and then to Tunis for the World Summit on the Information Society. It was the first time that a multi-stakeholder constituency came together. And they came up with outcomes, important outcomes, mm. that helped to shape our shared digital future. And so when I think to artificial intelligence and much of the work that we're doing at the ITU, the work that's happening in the UN system, it's um, in many ways inspired by what happened back then, that we need to have the governments, we need to have the policymakers, the regulators, the technical people, the engineers, the private sector, scientists around the table so that we can discuss the risks and look at the benefits. And that's absolutely what's needed when it comes to AI. Um, and I think that's also what we're trying to achieve with our AI for Good Summit. It's also something that we're trying to achieve with UN partners. We have a UN interagency working group where we showcase uh, use cases. We have about 700 use cases. We have about 50 different policy instruments that we can leverage for artificial intelligence. So again, I think it's an example of where different stakeholders can come together and share their expertise and knowledge. Fascinating, and you mentioned AI the AI for Good Global Summit, which ITU hosts, and you hosted uh, just, what, uh, a few months ago, a little months ago. less than three yeah. months ago, um, the United Nations leading conference on artificial intelligence, uh, an event, I have to say, that's really gone from strength to strength since its genesis in 2017. So hats off to you. So maybe you could give us a little insight. Where did the idea, what, what drove you to, what drove the ITU to start that forum in the first place? And what would you say has been its biggest contributions uh, to, to the conversation around AI and, and development? So if we think back pre-2017, the ITU was already working on artificial intelligence on the standard side. We didn't always call it AI in every case. It was about network optimization. It was about standards on machine to machine. It was about kind of the future of AI and 5G networks. Um, and so we were working already on the standards front. 2017 was also the year that AlphaGo beat the world champion. Uh, so that was a big thing that hit the news. But most things were sort of in the early stages. So we thought, let's bring the global community together and let's start talking about how grassroots solutions ideas could actually be matched to some of the world's biggest problems. Again, we brought our UN partners together from, from UNESCO to UNDP to FAO to others to look at different kinds of WHO challenges and, and see how we could find solutions together. Um, it has grown uh, a lot. We had our biggest one this year with some 11,000 participants. 11,000. Yep. Uh, we have uh, added new features, um, but for us, it's not 
just about an event. It's, it's actually, it's about, a, it's a movement, and it's also about the concrete work that we achieve between events. So again, a focus on standards and the ITU's leading role when it comes to technical standards, but also the ITU's role when it comes to capacity development with the AI Skills Coalition, the policy dialogues that we facilitate. We have started to convene governance discussions. We had our governance dialogue this year. We had 10 principles that came out of that governance dialogue. Um, and I think when we look to next year and what the future holds for AI for Good, Next year will be also critically important because, as we heard uh, from one of the speakers this morning, uh, the United Nations has set up a scientific panel uh, on artificial intelligence under the Secretary General. Uh, that panel will have some outcomes for next year. We'll also have the UN Global Dialogue on Artificial Intelligence, and that will take place on the margins of our own AI for Good Summit in Geneva. Amazing. July 7 to July 11 in beautiful Geneva. There you go. Coming up. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to finish this conversation off with is how do you, as AI, I mean, I, I was thinking about this conversation bef before we got up here. The, the, the great thing about the, the Secretary General's patch of, of, of focus is that it's, it's such a slow developing space. You know, AI is moving at a snail's pace. That's a joke. <laughs> Sarcasm. <laughs> how do you keep up? Uh, and may ensure that AI for good, that your global summit it, it evolves so that it can continue to provide that you know, space for collaboration but, but, and also direction for the future. Well, it's so much is happening and it's happening so quickly. Yes. Um, again, yesterday being in uh, Cape Town for this AI um, task force, they also launched the um, African AI initiative um, as launched by the African Union. Yeah. And so, so many countries are, are trying to play catch up. Um, others have regional and sub-regional initiatives. And I think that's where the ITU can be helpful by paying attention to what's happening by convening, by being inclusive. And I would say I think our AI for Good platform is the most inclusive because we bring everybody to the table and trying to stay on top of the challenges that are being faced. I mean, the, the issue of, of deep fakes, that's a big one for us. Um, some of the challenges, well, linked to cybersecurity and AI. This year we also launched and AI and space track. So each year we're sort of innovating, trying to stay on top of a very fast moving space. And if, if the panel that I, I moderated earlier today on quantum computing is to be believed, that it'll have to be uh, quantum computing for, for, for good in five or six years. Well, so we also had an AI <laughs> and quantum session. So we launched oh, a quantum for Putting good. the two together, that's exactly. like. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And if I could, um, Take a moment to do some, some promotion. So the AI Standards for Global Impact Report was just released, if anybody's interested. That was just from, last, last week at, yeah, at the Yeah, exactly. UN. Yeah, and then we also have what I mentioned about the multimedia authenticity um, standards work, which is super exciting and you know, a growing concern, but it's a space where we're really active and hope that our work can make an impact. Doreen. Um, Please put your hands together for the Secretary General. Thank you so much. Thank you.